next one's called RGB to hex conversion. The RGB function is incomplete. Complete it so that passing in RGB decimal values will result in a hexadecimal representation being returned. Valid decimal values for RGB are 0 to 255. Any values that fall out of that range must be rounded to the closest valid value. Note your answer should always be six characters long. The shorthand with three will not work here. The following are examples of expected output values. Notice when all three values come in at 255, it returns six F characters. And we should probably note, in case you're not that familiar with hexadecimal, it's a base 16 numbering system. Our, the normal numbers we talk about are base 10, the decimal ones. And so they use the, the digits up to 9, 0 through 9, and then they use letters to cover the remaining values up to 15 with a single character. So after 9, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F. So you could think of F as being the highest value. And because uh, it's base 16, we can use these letters to represent, you can think of them as representing up to four bits of data. So if we wanted to do eight bits, two of these F's are enough. And so uh, two F's will cover up to the value 255. You can multiply that out if you like. Imagine if you had two F's and you thought of it as the leading F as the sort of tens place, like we'd call it in decimal, but in here it's 16 to the power one. So you could have up to 15 sixteens. You can multiply that out and then add the up to 15 if you had a second F in the ones place, and that should come out to 255. Um, sorry if you already knew that, just trying to make it clear for people who might not be familiar with hex. So you're always gonna have six characters in the output. Notice all zeros, right? It's the same. You just have six zeros here. And then uh, you could calculate these out if you want and make sure that matches. But that's the idea. If we enforce this idea that the values are always between 0 and 255, we'll be good and we'll always get six characters of output. But if you do scan down to the tests, they're going to test that theory by throwing in things like negative 20. You see a 300 up here, so we're going to have to deal with that. Why don't you go ahead and pause it and try this one out yourself and then resume the video when you're ready. So I'm going to start by transforming the input into a collection and then I can use my uh, favored link methods for processing. So I'll bring the link library in, system link, okay. And then I'm just gonna take the integers and make an integer array out of them. Say R, G, B. And those will hold, it's just the input, but now they're all combined into an array. And I know I can do use the enumerable methods for these. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to transform these. One thing that they didn't explicitly say in the instructions that's notable is that we're actually returning uh, a string format here. So we're going to map these integer values into hexadecimal values, but in a string form. And we're going to have some good methods to make that easy. But first things first, remember what we do when we want to sort of transform a collection into another kind or maybe the same type but with different values. We have this handy select method, right? And we usually pass it a lambda function that says how to transform each element in the collection. I'll use n as a variable name for integers. It's very common. And so what can we do with each integer to get it in the right form. Well, we have two parts, right? First, we gotta enforce this idea that all values are between zero and 255. And so I'm going to introduce you to a function from the math class that you may not be familiar with. It's called clamp, and it's very handy. It returns a value that's guaranteed to be between the inclusive range specified by these last two parameters. 
um, we're using in 32s, I think. But yeah, the first one's the value that you want clamped, and then you specify the lowest allowable value and the maximum allow allowable value. And they might have some examples. It's okay if they don't. Okay, it's easy enough to understand. We'll just go implement it. So, um, for this we can say math, and remember for math we always have to bring in using system, the system library. So anyways, back to here. Now we could say math clamp, and the value we want clamped is n, and we'll say 0 for the lower bound and 255 for the upper bound. And remember those were inclusive bounds. If they were exclusive, it would cover everything up to that. And sometimes you'll run into methods that have exclusive endpoints, and so it's something to be aware of. But in this case, it'll allow 0 and 255. So if n happens to be within these ranges already, it just doesn't do anything. It just lets that value go through, which is perfect. If it comes in negative, it's just going to give 0. And if it comes in over 255, it's going to make n be 255. So that's just what we want. OK, so that's good. At this point, we know we have valid input for n. The second part of the challenge is to convert it to a hexadecimal string. So to do that, you might suspect we have a two-string method. I don't recall if we've used some of the argument passing with this in the past. If we have not, it may come as a surprise. But you can pass formatting characters to the two-string method. Let me go back to the top so you can see where I'm at. Standard numeric format strings, right? So I'm going down. You can look at these other ones if you want. They have various formatting, percent, you know, but we want hexadecimal for ours. And you can use uh, lowercase or uppercase letters. For whatever reason, I, I seem to always use uppercase, but they should both work. And the other thing to take away from this is, and see, look at this, even the example, right? 255, when you say X, it's coming out with those F characters that we wanted, right? That was the maximum value. So that's good. And then notice that you can specify a number of digits that you want. This is important for us too. We don't want these leading zeros in our output, right? We only want two characters. So instead of passing x4, we can pass x2. Let's go back and try that. So inside, I'm going to pass a parameter that says x2. So now we have a valid integer value. It's being converted to a two character hexadecimal string. And so at that point, this should make the new collection that we need. And so it'll be a collection of strings, right? That's not, that's close, but we gotta get just a single string. And so I believe we've used in the past string join. Do you remember that one? where you get to pass it a character that you can use as a delimiter, uh, something to put in between each element. So if you just wanted, if you wanted a comma between them, you could put a comma, you could put a space, or if you want them all crunched together like we want, right? Look at this output, there's no spaces in there. We just want it all crunched together. So I'll just put the empty string. There'll be no space in between, no characters. And then finally, you t you, the second argument is the collection that you want. So I'll just put that collection in there. We get this nice one-line Wally here. So I'll go ahead and test this. I think I got everything I need here. You can hit Control Enter to trigger the testing. And we got green, so that's good. Uh, there's some kind of warning with the tests, but that doesn't really apply to us. So yeah, green is good. I imagine we'll see a lot of this kind of thing. You could have, like we have done in the past, break this out into a separate line. You know, you could have made a, a little integer array variable here and loaded it there and then passed a, that variable name in here if you want. You know, this is just another way to do it if you want everything on one line. So let's submit, grab our points. And 
and okay so yeah you could use math min and max but hopefully you appreciate math clamp right that kind of handles both of these in one whereas they're kind of um, using composition here first running a min then running a, a max and then yeah they had the the form they tied the formatting in here they used the string format method and that's where they specified the hexadecimal two characters and then these numbers here I think are indexers for these values that you have to put after the the double quoted statement so yeah I like ours better my value yeah, and this is the kind of thing you can do too, right? It's okay because there's only three values here, but you can imagine something where you had a lot of values. I don't want to write three separate lines that all do the same thing, you know? But yeah, this is fine. This isn't bad in, in an example like this. I will say I don't like cramming these if statements together. It's ugly. There we go. We got another clamper here to string and they just did it on a per value basis concatenated each result together yep same kind of concept as this last guy or gal string rgb yeah lots of ternary stuff kind of ugly to read i don't don't like that one as much so yeah uh, feel free to share whatever you came up with. Hit me up with questions if necessary. Otherwise, thank you for watching.